Hello and welcome to Exide Masterclass Car Speed. I remember when I started test driving cars, quick 0 to 100 time would have been around 6 seconds, really fast would have been 5 and anything below 4 would have been just crazy. But nowadays things have changed. I mean here I am behind what is for all intents and purposes a standard electric 4 door sedan. How fast do you think this can go to 100 kilometers an hour? 7 seconds? 6? How about 4? When it comes to electric cars, we've got to rip up the rule book because they're so different to what we already know. Let's leave aside that crazy acceleration just for a second because there's so much more about EVs that they have to offer. And when it comes to that impending electric revolution that we've all been promised, how exactly is that going to impact you and I? Well, for starters, instead of talking about kilometers a litre, all of a sudden we're talking about range. And instead of where you'd normally find an engine, well, there's nothing. Look! And what about recharge times? With electricity, you can't just top up the tank with 2,000 bucks of petrol. Instead, you're going to need one of these things. And that means waiting. A lot of waiting. Let's start with the basics. With an electric car, you have an electric motor instead of an internal combustion engine. A pure EV, aka a BEV or a battery electric vehicle, uses only electricity to drive the wheels. These motors are smaller than engines, which means, in some cases, it frees up space. The large battery pack powers the electric motor and should be charged from a wall outlet or fast charger. It's similar to filling up a car with petrol, but you're recharging it, much like you would your phone. The only problem is, it isn't quick. Even the fastest DC chargers still do an 80% charge in around 30 minutes. Perhaps one of the biggest benefits of EVs is that they have lower local emissions. That's emissions related directly to the use of the car. We're not taking into consideration how that energy is generated in the first place, but it means that there are no nasty exhaust gases coming from the tailpipe. Because there is no tailpipe. The heavy batteries are sandwiched underneath the floor, in between the two axles, which basically means you get a lower center of gravity. A lower center of gravity translates into a less bouncy ride. But more importantly for enthusiasts like me, it means a planted car with confidence to attack the corners. But hold on. EVs aren't without their problems. As much as batteries play a huge role in electric cars, the metal used for that battery production, well, it's starting to outstrip supply, leading to EV battery prices going through the roof. There's another issue too. If you've used a phone daily for say two to three years, you'll notice the battery performance wears out. And you don't need me to tell you that if you have a car that only lasts about five years, well, that's not a very sustainable practice, is it? Now, You'd probably expect a petrol-loving Luddite like me at this point to tell you to stick with petrol power, right? But no. See, there are minds far more capable than mine already working on solving those various problems. As always, Elon Musk wants better answers. This year, he announced that Tesla is shifting their car batteries from lithium-ion to iron cathode. This nickel-free battery approach is one of the main backbones behind Tesla's million-mile battery tech. This advancement would increase the number of charge-discharge cycles from 1,000 to 4,000. What does that mean for you and me? Well, for a car that's recharged every week, that would result in a 75-year battery life. And that's not all. General Motors have been investing in their Ultium line of batteries. With this tech, you can change out each individual battery cell if it goes bad and replace it with newer technology. What that means is your old EV is far less likely to be obsolete. Even someone who loves their dino juice powered cars like me can appreciate the benefits an EV gives. Think about all the millions that have been spent 
making cars quieter, more refined, eliminating the vibrations all emanating from that internal combustion engine. However, there's a problem. In Sri Lanka, most people prefer internal combustion engine vehicles and you can't blame them. They're more affordable, they're more convenient to use. We just don't have the infrastructure ready for EVs. The most efficient way of charging an EV is to do so while it's stationary, which is why smart tariffs for overnight charging make a lot of sense. We we'll need to see more public locations have charge points too, but all this means that electricity consumption would be higher, meaning that the government also needs to rebuild infrastructure to accommodate the demand. And that's all pointless if electricity isn't generated in an environmentally sustainable way. Look, I love petrol-powered cars, and there's no way of replicating the thrum of a V8 or even the unique characteristics of this lovely little Alfa Romeo over here. But I do understand the importance of reducing emissions, which is why I think if we can get the boring, mundane, everyday stuff electrified, maybe, just maybe, there's a chance that we can enjoy cars like this for many, many more years to come. The future shouldn't scare us, it should excite us. Thanks for watching this episode of Exide Masterclass Car Speak. If you enjoyed this and want to check out some more content, then feel free to click on these pop-up banners here. And as always, don't forget to like, subscribe and share.